All right, so single family prices are dropping and it shows this article for 10 months in a row, they've been dropping. Now this is after years of single family, multifamily, all real estate just being on fire, right? Just going crazy, there's no way it couldn't slow down. Well, about February, maybe March, April, things started to cool off a little bit and then they started cooling off a lot. And so we're seeing that in the single family market. Now I predicted, I did a video about this about a year ago saying the 2022 housing crash, you can see that. And people thought it was crazy. They're like, there's no way. It's not, things are not gonna happen. They're not gonna crash, they're not gonna come down. Well, we're seeing it. In some markets, things are coming down 10, 20, 30%. Um, so we are watching that, we are seeing that. And you can just see it here, the reason why is that the payment is going up from a 3% interest rate to over 7%. Just by moving that much, uh, a payment goes up 41%. If you can count escrow, interest, insurance, different you know parts of that payment together. So a 500K house, basically at 3%, could be $2,353 a month, including escrow with 20% down. And at a 7%, it's 33.28, which is a 41% increase. Now I wanna say why this is actually good news for multifamily investors. And so if you're a multifamily investor, you wanna stick around and hear this because I think it's very, a lot of people don't see this, they miss it. But I'm gonna go over in three easy steps. We're gonna share a quote for you at the end, so stick around. All right, so the first thing I wanna say is that affordability is down for homeowners. We talked about that, right? The payments gone up, 41% increase in the payments. Um, but the thing that's really interesting is that people have to live somewhere, right? So what are the choices? You can either live with mom and dad, or you can stay in an apartment, right? So we're seeing continual demand for apartment and apartments. So that's what we're seeing is we're seeing the demand for single family because of affordability, some of the pricing is going down in single family. We're seeing pricing adjust a little bit in multifamily, but we're seeing rents continue to rise, right? In Jacksonville, Florida, where we have 1500 multifamily units, we're seeing rents rise uh, in the last 12 months, about 20% just in what's happening in the market. There are thousands of people moving to Jacksonville, Florida every single month, right? So there's people moving and not every single market, but in particularly a growth market where people are moving to, we're seeing rents continue to grow. And I think that's gonna continue to happen nationally in a lot of markets, not every market, not markets that are flat or declining, but where population is growing, that's gonna continue to happen. So just a su supply and demand, right? So, um, you know, there's different studies that have come out the last couple of years showing that we're short on housing units, typically, you know, three to eight million apartment units, right? So uh, one study here shows that we're short more than five million homes. Uh, another one from the National Association of Realtors says that we're short 6.8 million homes. Um, and then this other one says 3.8 million. So which is it, right? Well, it's somewhere between three and eight million. Some people would say it's a little lower, but in general, we're short. We have more need for housing. And so I'm gonna get into why I think this is a very unique opportunity that we need to take advantage of right now. Okay, so we have a short window to buy more. Now, some people think I'm crazy for saying this, but if you look at this chart from Jeff Clark, it talks about when the Fed starts raising rates to the time goes by until they start cutting rates. And the average is five months, right? The average is five months. We're, we started in March, so we're at nine months right now. And the longest they've ever raised rates when they start raising rates to when they start cutting rates, it has been 13 months, right? So I think what's going to happen in the next three to six months, uh, if history is a tell, you know, March will be a year, that they're gonna actually start cutting rates again. Now, why would they do that? They do it because of a financial crisis or problem in the financial system. They could do it due to a recession. And when they do that, they're gonna start cutting rates. We're gonna see interest rates start getting more attractive again. And then a lot of this money on the sidelines is going to pile into multifamily investments. Uh, if you look at this chart, this is a really interesting chart that came up by Bloomberg. It shows that before the pandemic in 2020, there was about a trillion dollars Americans had on the sidelines in cash. Well, now they have about five trillion, right? So it's gone up five times. So people are sitting and they're waiting. So what's gonna happen when that tide turns, there's gonna be a big flood of, of money going into assets such as multifamily. So I think this is a time that we're gonna look back in a year or two and we'll say, man, I really wish I had bought more, right? Because demand is up, it's gonna to continue to go up. And if you can find a deal that makes sense for you, particularly with a value add approach, you come in, you do renovations, you can see the property value increase. For example, in Jacksonville, we're buying properties, uh, you know, similar to this one behind me. And, you know, we're seeing rents 
go up as we do renovations. So if we do a light renovation for $6,000, we can see rents go from 1,000 up to around 1,500, right? And that's again, when somebody's living there, it's after people move out, we renovate, and we're able to see the new rents for new people moving in at 1500 or higher. So really, really awesome. So you can check out this chart here from Mother Jones. This is one of my favorites. It shows the correlation between rent and inflation. They're almost parallel, right? They go hand in hand from 1960 till now. Um, and so, you know, multifamily properties are different than single family, where a single family or, or you know, whatever your house is worth, it's based on what the house across the street or across town sold for. Well, multifamily is based on income. How much income was produced from that property. So I mentioned the value add approach. If we can increase the income of the property, we can increase the value, which is awesome. So when you buy a, a property, whatever kind of property it is, your buying price is fixed, but your interest rate can be adjusted later. So that's something to really think about. So just in summary of this, I want to say fewer people are buying homes. I think it's a really good thing when it comes to multifamily investing. The reason for that is that it gives opportunities uh, for you know people to get into uh, you know, or just as investors to get into apartments, you know, to get into to buying apartments. So there's going to continue to be more demand. You're going to see how it goes. Uh, but I will say this to you, the confused mind, I talk about this a lot. They will, they will say, I am going to wait, right? I'm just going to wait. Well, right now, you know, due to inflation and due to the opportunities that are there, if you are a retail investor, meaning you're not an institution, uh, a lot of investors are just waiting. And I think it's the worst time to wait. Um, you know, Warren Buffett says, be fearful when others are greedy and be greedy when others are fearful. There's, there's some fear out there right now, but I think if you have a level head and you find the right deal that makes sense for you, that has some sort of value add component, um, I think you'll look back and say, you know, I'm really glad I got into this deal at this time. Obviously consider your own situation, I'm not giving you any specific advice, but something definitely to consider. Uh, consider this quote from Warren Buffett. He says, risk comes from not knowing what you were doing, right? He also talks about uh, diversification. Diversification is helpful when you don't know what you're doing, right? So if you know what you're doing or if you understand uh, the forces of the economy and what's happening, uh, being in the right type of assets, it, it's not as risky because you understand how the investment really works. Uh, I wanted to share this with you. This, this resonated with a lot of people. This is, uh, is multifamily investing over? Uh, I kind of asked this question. I went later, I went, I'm sorry, much more into detail about this particular topic. You can check out this video up here. We had a lot of good feedback on that just as far as why I think multifamily is an incredible investment right now. And uh, if you haven't joined our investment club, we're doing things in the multifamily space, in the ATM machine space, in the oil and gas and alternative uh, space as well. So just check that out down below. Join our investment club. We'll start a relationship with you. We can only share some of our deals with you. If we've had a call, if we've had some sort of, uh, you know, relationship uh, set up with you just to learn about your goals and what you're doing. So check that out. Uh, thanks for investing in your own education. We look forward to seeing you on the next video.